A couple of months ago, I made this 40 pin cable tester platform with an Arduino Nano, but it had some problems. So I did a design update with today's sponsor PCB Way, turning it into a super mini mega tester using an ESP32 C3 super mini module, which is one of these with the USB C connector and they call it super mini, but it can be hard to read. So this is doing the job that I was hoping the Arduino Nano would do. The problem I was having was the Nano was out of resources. It was using almost all of its working memory, probably with the overhead of having five I squared C GPIO expanders and the OLED code for the rotary encoder and the general test functions. It just couldn't do it all. So I would call a function that's no big deal and suddenly the board might reboot or I'm trying to write to the OLED and it might write garbage or something and it makes no sense because if I take that exact code snippet, put it elsewhere, like in the setup routine, it'll run it no problem and print to the screen. It just can't do it under certain conditions. Now with this, using the same code and fixing some bugs, I'm only using 4% of working memory on this and nothing's crashing and all the things I'm trying to do are working. And again, as a review, if you have a cable type that you want to test, in this case it's a one quarter inch audio phone jack, if you have two jacks, you can connect one on a 40 pin header as an output and another on the header as an input. And when you plug the cable into each side, you can run the test function that's set up to look for the right pins in the right place. And it will tell you quickly if this passes or fails, and even if there's some unexpected short circuits between certain pins. And for a high level view of the schematic, there's the ESP32C3 module. It's going to be running at 3.3 volts, powered by USB. And I have I squared C using FET level shifters to go from 3.3 volt to 5 volt logic because these GPIO expanders need to run at 5 volts. So the I squared C bus is set up for 5. So I have five of these GPIO expanders to give me two banks of 40 GPIO and those are accessible on an output and an input 40 pin header. So I can plug cables into both sides, send out test signals, try to read them back in and see if the connection is missing or if the connection is being read elsewhere where it's not expected, which is a short circuit. And the OLED is also tapping into the I squared C. Then we just have the rotary encoder with its push button directly wired to the module. And that's basically what the whole circuit is. So one of the demos I did in the previous video, here's just a regular phone cable. And if I plug this in where I have told software to look for the pins, I built in a function to test RJ12. So if I run this, test pass, but if I unplug one of these, now those should be open connections if I run this again. Fail open pins three and four. And those are the tip and ring in the center of this six pin connector. So that's working fine as before. I'll show a screen capture of what a successful test looks like on the serial monitor where I have three data arrays that I'm using to figure out if there's a failure of any kind or if everything passed. One of the things I could not do before was show short circuit failures on the OLED. So I'll show on the serial monitor what a short circuit failure would look like. And I will simulate a short circuit here by taking some DuPont wires. I'm going to deliberately put them where they're not supposed to go. And it should show up as pins being shorted because they're connected somewhere wrong. So I scrolled to the RJ45 cable test and now there should be no wires going in the right place. I should have eight pins open circuit but three short circuit that are going somewhere incorrect. So if I run this, now pins one through eight are failing open 
and pins 1, 3, and 4, which are what I plugged in over here, are failing as a short circuit because they're going in the wrong spot. So now this is finally performing the way I expected. So I'll take this away, cancel the test. Here is an RJ45 working cable. So if I do plug this in, run the RJ45 test again, now it passes. If I unplug one of the ends, they should fail all open but no shorts. And it looks like it's working. And now there's a new test function I added. I have a USB-C on both sides of this cable, and I have USB-C breakout boards with just a few of the key pins. We have VBus and ground, data plus and minus, and then the configuration channels CC1 and CC2. So those are six pins, but those CC pins have a 5.1 or so K resistor to ground each, and that can complicate the test. I can work around it, but just to get this quickly running, I'm ignoring the CC pins. I'm just going to test power, ground, and data plus minus, four pins. So I will plug this in where I set it up to look for those pins, scroll to the USB-C test, and it passed. If I unplug one, now it's failing on four of the pins. One, two, four, and five. Because if I number these from top to bottom, one, two, four, and five are VBus ground and data minus and plus. Those are the only ones we're testing, so it's detecting those pin positions as fail open. So this is working a lot better than the Arduino Nano version, and I'm learning more about using these ESP32C3 modules. I've got eight of those in total now, and I'm starting to migrate things in new projects to use this. So now that the platform is more stable, I can continue working on even different ways to use it. It can be for more than just testing cables. We do have GPIO here capable of sourcing and syncing current. So this could become a test platform for a test bench or something like that. And now we may be able to get some wireless going as well. So this will definitely find some practical uses beyond cable test.